Good evening. Welcome to Android Authority on Air, the original Android Hangout Show on Google+. I'm Derek Ross. And I'm Scott Anderson. This week we're joined with three special guests. Uh, we have returning guest Francisco Franco. He is a popular kernel developer for multiple devices. If you're into the to rooting and roaming, I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, we have returning guest Derek Moore, who is a fellow Android enthusiast. And we have John Curley with us as well. He's first time on the show, but he's a long-time friend of uh, the Android uh, community. Welcome, everybody. So, so this week was pretty much Android Christmas, right, Scott? Yeah. Um, Google I.O., you know, 2012, uh, once a year. Definitely uh, release everything new coming out of Jelly Bean, and uh, we're all excited about that. And we're kind of going to be going over that a little bit uh, later in our show. Um, but the agenda for tonight is going to be, we're going to be talking about some Android statistics. i uh, got some numbers released, how many devices are getting activated. Uh, we're then going to be going over Jelly Bean in depth. Uh, then a lot of Google app, uh, apps got updated, uh, a lot more functionality. Uh, and then some devices that were released, the Nexus 7, the Nexus Q, and then we will end with a little bit of some rumors. All right, so let's talk about the stats real quick. Uh, so Android is huge, right? I mean, that, that's why we're all here. Android is a force to be reckoned with. Last year at I.O. 11, there were 300 million devices. A year later, there's 400 million devices. And a million of those devices are actually being activated every day now. So from about a month ago when it was 950, yeah, I predicted it would be a nice milestone for I.O. 12, and guess what? Here we are, a million devices a day. That's, that's insane. That's actually 12 new devices every second of every day. So as the show's been going on now for a minute, we've had roughly, you know, five devices uh, activated. That's, that's nuts. Um, the Play Store is growing, too. Uh, there's 600,000 apps available in the Play Store, and that leaves us with about 20 billion total downloads. That's, that's insane. Like I said, uh, Android is, is growing leaps and bounds. Now, let, let's bring us to the Android Christmas, as I said. Uh, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean was officially announced, officially released to certain people um, on Wednesday first day of I.O., and during the keynote, it was just gift after gift after amazement left and right. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is Project Butter. And you know the saying, you know, smooth as butter? That, that's pretty much what Project Butter was all about. Um, they were doing things such as, you know, setting a standard is 60 frames per second across the board for, for Jelly Bean. Uh, doing triple uh, buffering, and they're ramping up CPU on screen touch. So when you touch the screen, that means you're going to do something. So boom, let's make sure you know we're using as much power as possible. That way it's not slow. There's no lagginess whenever you touch the screen. So it's uh, Jelly Bean is the most responsive, fastest, most fluid version of, of Android to date. Um, I know that some of us in here, uh, Derek, myself, Francisco and John are all using Jelly Bean and said, am I right, guys? I mean, is it not Project Butter? Is it not as smooth as butter? Completely fast? Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, yeah. sweet. <laughs> now, uh, Francisco, uh, you, you said before the show a few interesting things that uh, as a kernel developer, you've actually seen some of the Project Butter <coughs> commits in the uh, Android kernel code. Is that right? Yes, uh, I've been following Android OMAP um, tree for a long time, and I've been merging patches a long, long time. And in one of the patches, like one month ago, was to the interactive governor, and was exactly like we see on the project button. When we enable that option, we touch the screen, and the CPU just ramp it up, uh, basically to the medium processor frequency. Um, so we've been secretly in, and without knowing testing one of the functionalities of this project butter. So it's kind of nice seeing what they actually did on the so, kernel side. So anybody that's uh, on an ICS ROM right now and using your kernel and possibly other kernels as well, 
could be seeing that CPU performance increase if they're if they're using a one of those custom kernels. Yes, that's right. But uh, I have to say that um, half the work on the project butter is kernel, the other half is on the Android system. So we can see some improvements from that patch, but not all of it. And most of the improvement is on the Android that repo buffering does most of the work. So we just see a tiny bit of the improvement. It is nice to see that some of that can be backported a little bit by the development community. Just you know, even just a little bit, a little, you know, every little bit helps. So I, yeah. I wonder how, how much does it ramp up the CPU? Does it go to 100 percent? Does it go to 90? Um, how much does it actually increase the CPU cycle, clock cycle? It depends because um, the system is always ramping up, ramping down, not only because of the touchscreen. Uh, if the system is running applications on the background and I touch the screen, maybe it ramps to the maximum. If the system is not using anything else, if I touch the screen, maybe it ramps up to the next frequency, maybe to the other next frequency. It depends on a lot of things, not just my pressure, not just uh, me using. Obviously, it helps a lot because we need that frequency power. Yeah. So for the uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. sorry, I was going to say for, for the uh, user space changes, there was a, a nice talk at Google I/O called "For Butter or Worse" that was full of really horrible butter puns, and it's actually <laughs> up on uh, YouTube right now. Um, Chad Haas and uh, Homangi, the, the, the two tech leads on the project, talked about it. And apparently a lot of the improvements were from the, the uh, triple buffering. I didn't realize they had um, some kind of bad uh, buffer management problems in a, a, a pixel fl or surface flinger. That, uh, that they, by adding additional buffering, and they were able to uh, uh, fix a lot of the latency problems. Then you know what like I said? It, they definitely did. I sat there Thursday morning at... Uh, and compare my phone, my Galaxy Nexus running Jelly Bean, which we'll get to later, with somebody on ICS stock and just sitting there doing similar functions, you know, side by side, I could definitely tell. As well as I.O., they did the demo too. They did a more, much more sophisticated demo than I did, but uh, yeah, I could definitely tell it was a lot faster. Yeah, didn't at I.O. they had like a 4,000 frame per second uh, camera and they did an ICS versus Jelly Bean and they kind of opened up the app work and Jelly Bean seemed smoother and it beat it but it was very smooth. Yeah. They, used, they used one of the cameras that uh, uh, Peter Jackson used for the new Lord of, Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, cameras are called red. So the red camera, yeah. Is, yeah. Huh. Anyone seeing this can just go it up. Right, right. So beyond the performance in, uh, Increases. Uh, we have a whole bunch of updates to, to you know core functionality, such as you know home screen widget, uh, which is, is neat. Uh, you know before in ICS and below, you have a widget you add to your home screen. If there's an icon in the way or another widget in the way, you can't add it there. You know it, it turns all red. We've all seen it. You know so we have to then not put the widget down. We have to go move the icons all around, make space to put that widget there, and then you know, and then we can put it there. Well, that little hidden, you know, little annoyance is no longer there in Jelly Bean. So as long as there's enough room on the screen for the widget, it'll move the icons around or pre-existing widgets around. It'll just dance all around the screen as you sit there and move up and down, left and right, and everything, making room for the widget. It, it's very nice. It, it's something that you know you're like, wow, why should we should have had this all along? You know, it's it's it's, it's very very nice. Well, Derek, it's actually funny that you mentioned that because I'm running ICS, you guys are running Jelly Bean. Um, I was running, making some widgets, and uh, I call it the red screen of death because it, it makes a little red, and uh, it's an, it is definitely an annoyance, and uh, it actually has annoyed me a lot more recently knowing that the problem is no longer there. Well, I'll tell you what, Scott. After the show, we're going to root your phone, and we're going to put Jelly Bean on there so you don't have that problem anymore. All right, buddy? Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I ran into a little bug, uh, I think, related to that teacher uh, today when I was you know, dragging a bunch of icons out of the, the icon drawer onto the home screen. If I tr they wouldn't go into folders sometimes, and the icons would end up chasing each other around the <laughs> launcher screen. It was, it was kind of funny to watch because the one icon would just not join, would not go in the folder. So I think it's just a little uh, bug they still have to work out before they release the final version. 
I'm going to try it. If you try it, no, they are yeah. chasing anyone. <laughs> no, no chasing. So, uh, it was almost like a game. It was <laughs> so, we had some other updates, like I said, core functionality. Uh, who here doesn't have a lot of pictures on their phone or a lot of albums? And when you take a picture with your camera, you want to cry after you open it up. It, it, depending on how many pictures it has to load, it can take forever. You know, me using a Google Plus and having a lot of different albums and posting pictures all the time, wow, it's, it is so slow. The gallery on Ice Cream Sandwich, you know, it, I almost never wanted to even browse for an image to set as a wallpaper. It would take, you know, a minute to search them all. Well, that's the it's thing with that. It, it's, it's literally instant. Like, it, it's night <laughs> and day. So, but beyond that, you take a picture with your camera, and the animation has completely changed. It, it sl the image slides to the right. So yeah, it's like a carousel. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for those of you watching it, you know, it, it, it slides to the right. So, um, but that's actually reversed, and it's to the left. All right, so it slides. <laughs> this is very fast. I haven't tried it before. Yeah. What the yeah. hell is yeah. this? Now, now uh, I used to hate that. Right, so you, so you take a picture, right? So you, you hold your phone up, you take a picture, you look at it, you're like, nope, that's a bad picture. I just did so, it, my bad. So normally you would have to delete it, right? Well, not anymore, you just flick up. It's like, it's like a card, kind of like WebOS or other functions on ICS. You know, in Jelly Bean, as soon as I saw that, I thought that's, that's classic Matias Duarte right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's so good to see. Flick right off the screen, there goes the bad picture you don't want. But Franco's having some fun right now, I just want to point that out. Yeah, so yes, that, I took a picture like that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so you take that picture and you just sit there and just flip left and right, boom, 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 boom. It is, it's fun. I mean, I, as you can see, Francisco is having a time of his life just flicking pictures around. <laughs> and I, I thought that was amazing. I mean, it, it's something that you're like, wow, why didn't we have this before? I mean, it's very cool. Um, Android Beam was a, was a, had some functionality to it. You know, ICS was first introduced, and you know what? Uh, I've never used it in the past since December. What seven months? I, I've never actually. Not that's a lie. I've beamed two or three things to people playing around. But it'd be, you know, current things you can beam to people are like contacts or a YouTube video or a web page. You know, not hey, I just took this picture. Oh, I want to send this to you. Okay, what's your email address? You know, you have to go through all this crazy stuff. Well, well now uh, with, with the new version of Android Beam and Jelly Bean. You can beam pictures and videos right to people. So now you you, you take a picture and you you, know, you can you can uh, send it right through Beam. Very cool. Of course, you have to have people that have NFC enabled devices, but those are becoming increasingly more popular. No, you can send videos as well. Yes. Uh, have I tried it? No. But uh, I, mean, well, I I wonder how big the file size. I'm sure there has to be a restriction. You're not going to be able to send like a, an hour long, you know, video or even you know even a five minute long video is pretty darn long, you know, big in size. Oh, well, I mean, it depends on the resolution and whatever. But I mean, I, I don't know how big you can send. It'd be interesting to see what the threshold on, on that is. So, and uh, you know, also I said I haven't tried it. Because I don't have anybody that is around me that's running Jelly Bean, but as soon as I uh, find somebody that is, I, I will try that. Because, like you said, Scott, you know, it might just be based on one on size. Um, so notifications got a very interesting overhaul. What do you guys think about huge those? overhaul? It got a huge overhaul. I think oh, it's, it's awesome. It's I, I love the multi-finger gestures. I mean, that's just adding so much more functionality to your phone. And it, it's just great. You have more options. Um, you can can you make them all collapsed by default? Um, because I know that the top one is always the top one. The top one's oh, well, it depends. See, when you take a picture, or I'm sorry, when I take a screenshot, or you or some or you share a picture, or take a picture, yeah, uh, oh, or somebody shares one on Google, or somebody shares a picture on Google Plus, pictures are automatically open. Uh, more so than they're, they're not collapsed. So you can see like a little preview of the picture. So if I took a screenshot right now on my phone, it would show, you know, the top inch or something of, you know, a little preview. Look at that. I'm teaching uh, Francisco things, right? You know, he's, 
I, I think it's, it's working. It's working. I, yeah, I, I think yeah. it depends on the the priority of the notification. There's there's a talk at I/O about that. Um, I think the the what's new in Android talk, and they were talking about all the different uh, pre. They have different layouts for for, for the, the new notifications, and I think and you can also toggle. They expanded the list of priorities for notifications, so I think if they're low priority, they're not expanded by default. And emails, you know, before you know yeah. when you got an email, you just saw who it was from. Uh, I don't remember if you saw the subject really. I, I don't remember. Uh, okay, Scott's shaking his head no, but. But now I can actually see the first couple words or lines of the email. You know, a little snippet. And then you pull down and you can see like five, can't you? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's like the first six or something like that when you when you open it up. That's yeah. awesome. You don't even need to go into the Gmail app. Yeah. So widgets are now actionable. You know, it's vi or not widgets. I'm sorry, notifications. It is it's very very neat. Uh, the whole reason they did this is less clicks. And I know you don't have to tap around anymore. I like that. And then uh, you can no, no, no. you can embed action buttons into them too for you know calling back and whatnot is really really useful. Yeah, yeah. Missed calls you can do it right from the right from the widget. That, that's the only one I've seen actually uh, in the past two days playing with it. I don't know if there's any other ones off the top of my head. At all. Uh, I think they showed some proof of concept ones in one of the talks, but I, I hope we see more soon. Now you can customize those notifications. Let's say for example. Uh, Google Plus, I don't want any notifications from there. I can actually go into that app and just say, nope, no more Google Plus notifications. So you can turn off. So if you have an app that's annoying, but you, you like it, the app, but it, you know, it sends you annoying notifications, you just turn that right off. You don't have to worry about it. Just go, just hold down on the notification, app info, and then check, uncheck the little box that says allow notifications, and you're golden. Uh, uh, another feature that was released uh, was offline voice typing, um, which I think is an interesting feature. Um, you don't need a cellular connection to actually write things. Um, it's pretty cool, and if I mean, if you're going to be doing a lot of dictating throughout the day, and you don't have a good uh, service, or you just don't want to suck up your battery life, kind of cool. Uh, you know what? Uh, I I'm a fan of that. Somebody that commutes almost an hour each way to work. Uh, every once in a while, you know, I, I want to I want to send a text message, you know, maybe while I'm driving, and I'm not going to type while I'm driving because that's not uh, you know that's not safe, right? It's against the law now in Pennsylvania, so I don't do that. But uh, <laughs> but but that doesn't mean that I won't hit the voice search button and dictate my text message. I've done that before. You know, I'm sitting there at a stoplight or something. You know, or stop. You know, I want to dictate a text message. But I drive when I drive to work. I drive through areas that have no service. I live out in the middle of nowhere, right? So I've I've tried to dictate a text message when I have no service, and it just sits there searching and searching and searching, and then it never sends. And then I generally get pissed, and then I end up typing it out or something. You know, so uh, that's very cool that that's now rendered locally. You don't have to worry about having service. I like it. Um, Besides saving lives, because you shouldn't do that when you're driving, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's going to be good. Um, what else we got new here with, with Jelly Bean? Well, we also got uh, high def or higher definition uh, contact pictures. Yeah, so, very cool. So, because contact, contact pictures, you know, if they're not the right resolution, they're going to be blurry, and it's wasn't cool. Well, well, you know, and that was a server side problem. If you synced your contacts, let's say you had a high resolution picture, and Gmail, I believe, or Google Contacts would dumb it down to like 125 by 125, and then an ICS didn't they make it like 250 by 250? But still, it's not you know that's nothing. So that must be more of a back end change, uh, maybe. I, I'm I, I heard in one of the ch side chats that. Uh, the uh, system wasn't going to allow it to be over the size to be overwritten by you know, other services. I haven't tested it yet, to be honest with you. But it, that's a very cool feature, though. I know that now that I'm talking about it, I'm going to test it and try it out later. And we also got a uh, smart app updates. Smart app updates are basically, let's say you download an APK. Um, in order to update that APK, it's actually going to add the additional code in the APK and not make you re-download the whole file. Um, so basically what Google said is that 
the data usage is actually cut down to one third, um, which I think carriers will like, and I think people that are not on not on an unlimited. Uh, plan will like that. Well, as actually, Scott, so wouldn't carriers not like that because now they're not you're not using as much data. Oh um, yeah, I mean you can look at <laughs> users. Users are going to like claim that. the load on their network is hurting it. Yeah, yeah. Now, one thing that we're not sure on that is that might not be a specific to Jelly Bean uh, update because. It's a Play Store update. So, and, and it, from what I remember reading, is that devs don't actually have to do anything. Uh, you know, it just all happens on the back end. All they have to do is upload their their new uh, app, and it'll go go through bit by bit, looking at what has changed. So, if a developer completely redoes their app, then that's a, that's going to be a full APK change. You know, it's going to be a big download. But if somebody just let's say like Angry Birds adds a new level. No, you only need to download the new level. So yeah, that's nice. It means faster downloads, less data. You know, that that's very cool. And from IO, I believe it was devices from 2.2 or 2.3 and higher that will get that. But I, I do believe there's a Play Store upgrade. Very cool, very cool. Um, the other thing they're, they're doing is that they're also encrypting apps now that you've... if. Uh, any uh, paid app is, is now stored encrypted. I'm guessing that's to cut down on piracy. Yeah, you know, which, which helps out developers such as uh, yeah. you know, Francisco that, ha that has a uh, few apps out in the app store. What do you think about that? I mean, is, is piracy, have you noticed anybody uh, you know, pirating your apps? Yes. So, are you a fan of the uh, app encryption then, I assume? I haven't read much about it, but the concept seems cool. Uh, piracy happens. Piracy is everywhere. So even for applications that cost like two euros, come on, people just copy the APK and share it. But we can just add some licensing, and it helps a bit. So seeing Google concern about piracy, it's it's very good. Let's hope it, this helps in theory. Well. Last but not least, I want to spend a minute or two here talking about Google Now and voice search. In my opinion, besides the speed and performance, the coolest, most exciting features of Jelly Bean. Um, I know that that's pretty much the most I've played with, even though it, it, it it's you know get, it might get redundant. After a while, you know, the honeymoon phase, I don't think it's going to wear off because Google Now is more than just a, an assistant. So, so let's get, let's, uh, get uh, started with this here. So voice actions has been around since August 2010, I believe. Um, yeah, so yeah, Android users have had it for a while. So just, you know, maybe wasn't as good because it wasn't an AI. You know, it, it didn't give uh, comical answers. But, you know, you could always say send a text, call, remind me to, you know, simple things like that. It's always done. But the new voice actions are compared to what they previously were. They're instant. They're completely accurate. I haven't had any problems, at least. Um, they're very, very fast. I mean, like I said, they're, they're near instant. And... Depending on the answer or the query, the question you ask, it's going to be dictated back to you, which is something that's you know something that's new. There was uh, actually a, a video on YouTube comparing uh, Siri uh, to Google Now. Uh, it's an interesting video. You should probably go look at it. Yeah, I I actually did that Thursday yesterday morning with a coworker that has an iPhone, and I sat there with her iPhone and hit the hit Siri and. Hit voice, hit Google search, voice search, whatever you want to call it. I hit them at the same time and did and did a few things, and I I was amazed. It's faster. It's it's near instant. The results are better. Uh, some of the things that you can ask that I've played with and, and figured out. Um, I made a post about it earlier. Where to go? All right. So you so you can ask for what you know simple things like you know what time is it obviously. Um, you can ask things like 
you know, like the commercial, saying, you know, do I need an umbrella today? What's the weather tomorrow? Uh, what's the weather right now? You know, is it going to rain Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? You know, we insert a day of the week. What's the weather next Saturday? You know, things things like that. You can you can do that. You can uh, find dates. I can say, you know, when is Christmas this year? What what day of the week is the Fourth of July? Remind me to to make a Google Plus post at 8 p.m. Remind me in four hours. Remind me in 12 minutes. You know, uh, set alarm. You know, the time. Now, things you couldn't do before. The sports fans are going to love this. I can say, I can say, hey, did the Yankees play today? Or uh, hey, what, what's the score of the Yankees game? You know, um, you're 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 visiting an area, right? And you say, you know, I'm really hungry for Panera Bread for lunch. Take me to Panera Bread. How do I get to Panera Bread? Show me the closest Panera Bread. You know, and you're going to get directions on how to navigate there. Um, now, simple things you can say: How old is, or how tall is, or you know, a certain person. Might have to be a famous person, obviously. So, you know, if you use like you know, president or of a country, prime minister of a country, you know, that, you know, somebody like that, like Barack Obama or something, or if you say, you know, uh, Larry Page, you know, how old is Larry Page, how tall is, you know, things like that. You can ask simple questions. Basically, what you can ask in Google search right now, and it talks back to you. Um, you can have it play music or YouTube videos, like I can say, you know, play Radiohead, play Coldplay, you know, things, you know, things like that, and some artists it, it didn't work for. Uh, but, but some it did. It, it brought up playlists or brought up songs in my play music, and if I didn't have it, I could choose to play something by them on YouTube. Um, you can it's been in the past. You can say send a text, send an email to person. Here's the you know, message. You can tell them to call. But since it is Google search for everybody that has Jelly Bean right now, uh, hit the button and say do a barrel roll. Your oh, uh, does it do it? Yep, it does. It does it, it, yeah. Wait, no way. Do a barrel roll. Do it flip around? Uh, it's 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 loading right now. I'm on. Oh, it just it. it just brought up the uh, meme the the know your meme page. What? Do a barrel roll. Mine does it. Mine flips around. I'll try it Mine again. Does. Do a barrel roll. John, does yours flip around? Yep. Yeah. If you Do a barrel roll. <laughs> yeah. So if you say tilt, uh, it'll tilt. Okay, so basically to sum up vo uh, voice search and Google Now, it is a well, series Well, actually, Scott, of that's just summing up voice search. We haven't even touched Google Now yet. Google Now is a completely different animal. But yeah. those are tiles as well. Those are tiles, but that's voice search. Google Now is automation. Google yeah. Now has, honestly, Google Now is not, has nothing to do with, with voice search. Now, 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 from Google Now, you can do searches, and the more searches you do with voice search does make Google Now better. For example, if I search for sports scores, that's going to, then Google Now is going to say, oh, he's interested in the Yankees, so we're going to start showing him Yankee information. So they are related, but they're complete. But they're two separate animals. So have any of you guys played around with Google Now? It, it, it yeah. scared me. Yeah. Why did it, it scare you? Well, after I put it on there, I went to work and it apparently knew where I worked before. Like I didn't touch anything on the Google Now, but it's it said like 27 minutes to go home, no traffic delay, and I'm like, okay, you know I'm at work and uh -huh. you know where I live without me actually entering it in. It's kind of freaky. Well, very helpful. Now, now yeah, yeah. John, did you ever enter that information into Latitude at some point? Latitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do your yeah. home and your work. Because, because that's where it actually gets <laughs> it from. It actually gets home and work from Latitude. But, but yeah, I, I installed it uh, late, late night, Wednesday night, and I look at it, and it's like 58 minutes to work. It's like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> I, was, I was very surprised. So... Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, not, not to get it confused, uh, but Google Now, it, it, it's complete automation. Um, you remember that patent that uh, maybe like a month or two ago was found that Google filed for last fall? And we were all wondering, hey, is this a, you know, is, is this a Google Assistant? Well, it is, but it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's Google Now. It's more than just an assistant. It automates everything. 
Uh, it's like, world, world domination from Google. Yeah, so, so uh, example, uh, personal example, I'm at work. Um, it tells me how long it's going to take me to get home, the opposite. It tells me the weather outside. But the neat thing is, is it looks around where I'm at and says, oh, well, is he going to go to, you know, hey, look here, here's uh, Beaver Stadium, you know, go watch a football game. Uh, here's the Bryce Jordan Center, go watch a basketball game. Here's the creamery, go get some ice cream. You know, it's giving me locations that I are around to go do things. And then it also says, you're standing, you know, right, right outside uh, here and there's a public transit system here. So I get the bus schedule in front of my building because the bus stops there. So I can, and I, I mean, it, it's amazing. So if you're visiting an area, you, you know, you don't know where the bus stop is or what the bus schedule is, you pull out your phone, you look at it, and there it is. It's going to show you where the bus stop is and where the subway is, what the what trains to take, you know, what buses to take, everything. So, but Derek, know, I, I wonder, do you ever take the bus? Do I? Well, you know what? I do take it around campus because Penn State University is huge. Okay, so, I, so I'm, I'm just wondering, like, if it, if it gives you the card of, you know, public transit, let's say you, you know, disable that for, for that I can, one. I can, Remember I, can, I, can, I can swipe it away, and it won't, it won't pop up again until the data changes. That's the thing. A lot, it scared a lot of people. They're like, oh, wow, these are all, these are cool, you know, and then they get rid of that notification or get rid of that card, and then they're saying, oh, I broke it. Oh, my God, I broke it. I can't get weather back. How do I get weather back? Well, it's not going to show you the information until the weather data changes. Don't worry, you didn't break it. You know, weather doesn't update instantly. You know, it gets it from a third-party source. So whenever that weather data is updated, then the card will be restored or the notification will be restored. But yeah, Google Now um, said uh, gives you right now information on weather, as we said, traffic. So uh, as John said, I mean. Uh, he lives in a more metropolitan area than I do, so if there's road construction, it might tell him, hey, you need to go this way home because there's construction. Uh, if you search for a flight number, then you're most likely flying, it assumes, so you're going to get flight data. Uh, sports, you know, hey, Yankees, uh, as I was talking about, uh, tra you can do translation currency. If you're in a different time zone, it'll tell you your time back home, and I said in places, uh, they're, they're looking to add more cards as time goes on, but I mean right now it is very cool. I, I it's a service that I would use on a daily basis if I was away from home. I mean, generally around home, I don't think I need to use it. Like one, a, it's kind of an annoyance. Every place I've checked in around town, if I pull up, if I pull it up right now, it'll tell me how long it takes to get to every place I've checked in because it knows my location data, it knows places I've been. So I see like all the gas stations and restaurants and, and the lake and everything and it's tell me, you know, go here, go here, go here, go here. Uh, but I can just swipe those away. So anybody else that's been using Google now, I mean, I've been ranting and raving about it for a few minutes here. Anything I missed? Do you like it? Are you going to use it? Uh, I'm definitely using. I mean, I've been using uh, Fully Search for two two years now, I think. So it, it, it runs off my voice. It knows. I don't have to. Re I don't have any issues with it really. I mean, it, it's it's amazing. I'm speechless on it. Uh, well, before we move on to Google updates, Google app updates, <laughs> uh, we had a whole bunch of questions, Scott. You were. Uh, yeah, I got a. Um, what would you guys recommend, the Galaxy Nexus or a Galaxy S3? Well, um, now that Jelly Bean just came out, my answer is Galaxy Nexus. How about you, Derek Moore? Uh, well, I, I, I I've always been, been a Nexus fan, but the uh, someone ported Jelly Bean to the international unlocked uh, Galaxy S3 as well. So you know, go Android community. I mean, I I have to say I'm really just amazed at the community. This thing's been out what two days, and it's already on three devices now. It, it came um, out at sometime in the afternoon, and okay. I was running it at 11:30 at that yeah. that night. <laughs> it's it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. How about you, Frank? Oh. Yeah. Galaxy Nexus or uh, SGS3? Mm. I have both devices. 
and I can tell you that the Galaxy Nexus became as smooth as the Galaxy S3. So lean so, towards the Nexus? So you would say Nexus then because of its updatability or? No, I still prefer to use the Galaxy S3. So the Galaxy S3, I mean, it might even get faster with the Jelly Bean update. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, John, the master of phones? I think every week I talk to you, you're on a new phone. So <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your take on it? I, I got to stay with the Nexus. I, I, I hate overlays. I mean, it, it, the Nexus, yeah. Yeah, same here. So what, uh, what are other questions we have here, Scott? Um, we, uh, so we have a question that it looks like about Clockwork Mod. Uh, so, so using Clockwork Mod Touch 5.8.0.2, um, are you able to make a jelly bean backup? Uh, Eric S., it looks like you've tried twice and it fails. Um, I'm using Twerp. I know it works on Twerp. Uh, John, you're using Clockwork, right? Yeah, I, I used 5.8.0. Two and I was just able to do it right now after the question was posted. Okay, so yeah, it looks like, I mean, it might be a case-for-case -case basis, but uh, I said John's able to do it, so. Uh, and I am on the GSM version. I don't know if that's going to be what the difference is, if he's on LTE or. Yeah, uh, i trying to remember here. Eric, I've talked to you before. I don't remember if you're you're on LTE or you're on the, you know, which, which variant you're on, but yeah, so it looks, like, but I, I can do it on with Twerp. Uh, Derek, uh, you have the LTE version. Did you do a Clockwork Mod backup? I haven't tried to back up Jelly Bean yet. I, I, I have the ICS backup, but not Jelly Bean yet. Yeah, I don't have the ICS backup. Mine went bye-bye. That's a, that's a horror story I can talk about after the show. Oh, God. I lost but, everything on my phone. Well, yeah, long, long story short, there's two versions of Jelly Bean out there for the Galaxy Nexus. I'm not going to tell you which one to run uh, because p people are having hit and misses with both. But the Droid Vicious one, I couldn't. My phone wouldn't boot. I had to fast boot, uh, restore all the factory images. But the the JD now it's called J Baron V or whatever it's called. That one uh, that one works great for me. But, said, but, you know, people are having hit and miss with each, uh, so, you know, your mileage may vary. That's just my own personal experience. But, hey, what's um, going I haven't, you know, I haven't restored the factory images in a long time. All right, well, now we're going to do some quick hints on apps. Uh, over the past couple of days, we've had a lot of apps, uh, Google Apps, actually, updated. Uh, first one, Maps, Google Maps, and Earth. Uh, Earth brings three mapping capabilities, and uh, an update to Google Maps brings the ability to download maps for offline use. Now, take into consideration that turn-by-turn -turn navigation um, and map searching is still unavailable without a data connection, which I hope that changes, um, but hopefully soon. Uh, Play Store also got updated uh, to 3.7.11, uh, Play Store's website also allows you to remotely update, uninstall, and install Android apps. Um, I won't get into the search features because the search function of the App Store online is not there yet. Um, and uh, like we talked about earlier, app updates will only download portions of the APK um, if need be, basically cutting down on the APK size for updates. And also, added to the Play Store was magazines. You can buy a singular issue or you can actually subscribe for a year. Um, and also TV shows. You can buy a singular TV show or you can buy the whole season. So content going up, making it more desirable, pretty awesome. I think that's a uh, great addition, you know, to the Play Store. I mean, they have something for everybody now. You know, you, you didn't want to do books. Well, hey, we got magazines. You didn't want to do movies. Well, you can actually buy the movie now, you know, instead of just rent it. Uh, you know, maybe that was stopping you from doing it before. You know, maybe you don't like movies, but you're all about TV shows. You know, maybe you don't have cable TV. So they have something for everybody. Their, their ecosystem, their content consumption, you know, is, ability is, is growing. And if it didn't grow, um, the tablet that we're going to be talking about soon would be less desirable. So they need to actually keep their content growing. Um, 
on to some more apps. Google Drive was updated. Uh, you can quickly find files uh, that, you've been, that have been recently opened or shared with you. You can also upload or download any file type um, from or to your Google Drive, which is actually really nice. Uh, you can also select contacts to share with easier. That makes it very, very easy to share um, Google Docs. Also, you got some faster navigation and faster uh, navigation while syncing in the background. And you can also align your text in the documents editor. Um, currents got updated as well. Basically, a little bit, uh, it's a lot faster. Um, it got the hollow, it, it, hollow theme. It's now yep. actually an a, a ICS or Jelly Bean app, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was the first thing I noticed. Yep. Looks a lot uh, different. Uh, I think it looks better. Uh, you got some things that hide automatically, and uh, you got some trending topics as well, which is kind of cool. Um, the Google Plus update, uh, Google Plus app got updated. It actually got a phone update, and it actually has a separate APK for tablets. The same same APK, but uh, it, it's a uh, it, it has tablet mode now, which I could, for the past year, you know, we've been hearing people yell. I want a tablet mode, you know, and you know what? It it worked on tablet. It it was a tablet mode, but all it was was a you know a zoomed in phone mode. You know, there was tons of white space or black space depending on which version of the app you had. It would just felt weird using it from a tablet. To be honest, I hated it and I never used it from my tablet because it just didn't fit right. But <laughs> but uh, now For those of you listening, uh, Derek's dog has a mind of its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, podcast for people. My, my dog is sitting on my chair, and he, uh, oh, he's a cute little bastard. I love him. Uh, anyways, uh, so, so what was I talking about besides cute dogs? Um, uh, the Google Plus app. The Google Plus app. Yeah, the tablet app. It is, it is nice. I want to use the tablet app, or I want to turn my phone in landscape mode so it looks like the tablet app. You know, it, it's nice. You know, like, I, I don't, I'm telling you what, this is the answer to everything that people wanted for Google Plus. So, if you if you're not happy with the tablet mode, you're never going to be happy because it's absolutely absolutely amazing. I think. Um, Personally, I hate the fact that you swipe the side. <laughs> you don't like that? I don't. I don't like that. Hmm. Not a big fan of it. I mean, it's still a lot better than it used to be, um, but it just left to right or just right to left. I don't know if anybody else notices. I was just actually invited to a hangout that I took on my Nexus. You can now blue box people, and you have the people showing on the bottom individual videos. Oh, oh wow. Tell, tell Pearl I'm sorry. I declined her hangout. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you can actually blue box people. You got all the videos at the bottom of everybody in there now. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, moving on, YouTube got updated. Uh, Much-needed update in my from my point of view. Um, nice UI changes. Yeah, I, I, I like it. And it's kind of going along with the new uh, Google Plus phone UI, kind of. You get that sidebar that you can bring over. Um, I like it. Um, and then you can also preload videos over Wi-Fi while charging. Well, and you can, you can preload two types of videos. So all my subscriptions, I can preload those or... You know how you have that watch it later feature? I don't know about you guys, but I've never used yep. it. Um, now maybe I'll, I'll want to because anything that I tag as a watch it later, it'll pre-cache those as well. So very, very neat. I, I might try it out. I, I have but, but one thing is uh, you actually do need an Internet connection to actually watch those cached videos. So it's not like you're downloading the video, oh, which, is, uh, which is completely understandable because let's say something got, you know, copyrighted and it got uploaded to YouTube, you cached it and hey, now I got it. Interesting. I did not know that. So what's, uh, well, it's better than nothing. I'll say that. Yeah, and it only caches on Wi-Fi and while charging. So just let you know. I think that's pretty stupid. I, I do too. Because, you know, why would you, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Because they can cache the file somewhere encrypted and still loading it, load it offline without any problems and without anyone cracking it. I don't understand the problem. That's stupid. If you can't, if you want to cache it, you want to watch it later, without internet connection. 
Very true. Stupid. Same thing with, you know, Google Movies and all that stuff. Cash it. Watch it later. So, um, and then Chrome got updated. And notice how I didn't say Chrome beta. It uh, lost the beta tag. So, Chrome actually got a whole bunch of things, but because of some recent developments with uh, patent wars, I'm not even going to say what devices Chrome was now supported on because it may make people want to hang out rage and break things. But with that said, yeah, for Android, it is now no longer beta. It has its gra graduate hat on and everything. So we're getting some questions about the Nexus 7. I know a lot of you probably tuned in just to hear about that device. So without further ado, by the way, this show is running a lot longer than we <laughs> We should have known it was going to run forever because, I mean, God, there's so much to talk about. So Nexus 7 has a uh, Tegra 3 processor. Now, some people, such as developers, aren't a fan of that Tegra 3 processor. But from a user standpoint, you know, it has four cores plus the one companion core, and it's uh, 1.3 gigahertz. And so it's fast. But uh, it said spec-wise, you know, we heard a lot of these before, right? You know, it's uh, eight gig or one gig of RAM, eight and 16 gig storage, depending on which version, seven-inch screen, 1280 by 720, you know, no SD card, and no rear camera. But there is a front-facing camera, which... You know, perfect because the device is so small and portable. It's meant, you know, you can do hangouts on video conferences, whatever. But who cares about specs? You know, it, it's uh, it's not really, you know, meant for that, in my opinion. They, you know, it's supposed to be fast and fluid, portable, you know, lightweight, easy to use, you know, consume content. But besides all those marketing buzzwords that make it into an amazing device, as I said earlier, it has a Tegra 3, and... A lot of people don't like developing on that, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what type of, you know, customization in terms of kernels, you know, we get. Uh, Francisco, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I have a Tegra 3 in my home. I have a One X. Um, Tegra 3 is a fast chip. There's no doubt about that. Um, the companion core plus four cores is a nice idea. But I think it's not very well implemented, and it can cause some lag, um, especially if you are using the companion core. You can control if you are using the companion core or the quad core. So you bought a quad core device and you are using one core. I I don't like it. Um, on the kernel side, um, the drivers are really hard to read. I have a lot of, lot of um, hard time to read what they want to do in the drivers. Um, the routines when changing the cores and going to the companion core, that's not very clear. It's a clumsy code. Um, Integra isn't very friendly to the open source community um, because I think they are controlling the Tegra CPUs on the kernel, like a micro kernel inside the kernel, or in the user land. I have no idea what they are doing. Uh, I can't control what they do. Um, I can't overclock the device because we have like six frequency tables. Come on. Um, it's not easy. Not, not, not easy. Um, I think you no one like will, will enjoy it. Sorry? You would have liked to see a Nomad processor or something, or Exynos. I was hoping they, I, I was hoping they would um, introduce OMAP 4470. Um, I would enjoy that, but I think Tegra 3 maybe it's cheaper for them. And after all, it has four cores in a 12 core GPU, so it's very powerful. But um, I think not as powerful as Exynos quad core, so. It's not bad at all, but for the developer community, I think it's not it's not nice. I, in my point of view, it's, it's just my opinion. Um, uh, and then we had another question. Uh, anybody here pre-order a Nexus 7? Yep. Yeah, I pre-ordered that darn thing before noon. When okay, so Derek Ross, you did. Derek Moore? 
Yep. Yep, you did. Franco, I'm gonna assume you didn't. I can't. <laughs> okay. I can't order. Oh, you can't. Oh. They don't like. The, the, he, he, if you could, would you? Have to call him? I, yes, I would, but I can't order to Portugal. Okay. John. I got an eight gig and a sixteen gig order. That's cool. interesting. Why would you order one of each? Uh, one for my car. I'm gonna try and do a built-in car stereo system and yeah. for personal use. That's a very good idea. Now, Derek Moore, which one did on, which one did uh, you order? I got the sixteen. Okay. Now, why did you get the sixteen? Um, a couple reasons. One, I mean, it was only fifty bucks to double the price, so that's that's a pretty good deal. Uh, and also. Uh, yes, uh, even though a lot of my content is in the cloud, there are a couple games that have really big downloads that you know are inching up on a gig just just for just for the game. So I, I wanted the extra space just for breathing room. Yeah, I wanted something cheap. I I got the eight gig for two hundred bucks. Uh, I you know I don't think I'm gonna have a problem. I don't do a whole lot of games. I may, I'll tell you what I may play Horn because that was the game they demoed, and man, that looked pretty cool. Uh, it was a cool video demo. But besides that game, I mean, I don't do games, so yeah, 8 gigs will be fine for me. I do stream everything, you know, through Google Play you know, so, and Google, you know, Google Music and everything, so I don't need local storage. Uh, so if you're like me, everything's in the cloud, then yeah, I think the 8 gig's perfect. But as Derek said, you know, game, if you're a huge Android gamer, you might need some extra space. Or if, uh, now, now, John, which one... Which one are you going to hook up in the car, the 8 gig or the 16 gig? Uh, the 8 gig. I have everything on the cloud storage with my tethering plan. So, I mean, Hangout Mobiles, uh, music on the go. If I can figure out to hook up the Q and the 7 in my car, it'll just be sweet. <laughs> now, Scott, did you order one? Um, I have the Zoom, so I'm kind of keeping um, maybe in the future. Uh, near future. I'll decide in the next couple of weeks. Now, you have a Zoom Wi-Fi or LTE? LTE. Oh, uh, because I was going uh, so yeah. to say, no matter, you'll get Jelly Bean is supposed to come out for the Zoom here, you know, in the near future. Yeah. So I was going to... You're going to get it? Yes, uh, 2013. Eight months after they... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, for what it's worth, I heard a rumor earlier today. A rumor. Rumor, rumor, rumor that Verizon was looking at the end of July for the Galaxy Nexus. Now, that, that, is a, that is a complete rumor. There's not, I mean, it's... Some I like that rumor. I like that rumor. ...talking, you know, so uh, if that rumor is true, then the Zoom LTE would probably get it into it. So that is an unconfirmed rumor. Somebody was talking about it. Uh, I, I, they are talking, actually, on one of my posts on Google+. So yeah, we, and on, on, c- c- kind of on that note, I mean, I... I think one of the most important things that Google announced that no one's talking about is the the platform development kit. Like they're actually going to give OEMs access to the source early, and I really wanted to hear more about that because I think that's sort of the you know the Android Upgrade Alliance take two. That's how they um, stop fragmentation, hopefully. Well, you know, yeah, well, but that's impossible. Yeah, that's impossible. <laughs> it might alleviate a little bit. They, they have, they have to cut down the- lead time. I'll tell you what, it's not going to hurt. You know, it, it can hurt. It can only help. So it, it's like, as Derek Moore said, if it's last year at IO 11, they announced the Android Alliance to get out timely updates, and then we never heard from it again a year later. So hopefully the PDK, PSK? PDK, what, 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 I think. PDK. Yeah, hopefully the... PDK, the platform development kit, uh, helps alleviate some of that pain. Okay, so let's move on to the other device, the ball with a blue slash multicolor ring, the Nexus Q. Um, it's going on sale for $299, and uh, basically it's a ball that is an Android computer. Um, it's basically a social sharing platform. Um, is what I got out of the Google I.O. And uh, interesting functionality. And uh, basically, picture yourself going to a party. Somebody's got a uh, Nexus Q, and you got a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of music and Google Music, and they got Android phones. Go over to the house. You make your own playlist, a master playlist, and 
it's just awesome because you're sharing your song with somebody else, but the thing is you're not giving your song. So I, th I, I know how they did that with the copyright, um, so it's legit. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, I personally think it's overpriced. Uh, what do you guys think? It's a Galaxy Nexus in the box without the screen. John Curly bought one, so let's let's hear from the man that shelled out three hundred bucks for that. I seriously didn't know what it was until about five hours after I bought it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I seriously just thought Nexus, the dev community, is going to make it to where it needs to be. So I had no worries. I see this being a replacement for my Blu-ray network uh, player. Well, my, Hulu, my Netflix. The dev community actually got a game running on it, I believe. Yeah. In 24 hours, yeah. Yeah, which is, I mean, you got some hope there, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> worst case situation, I just have a giant Death Star slash, uh, you know, looking I'm device. I'm confused because, yeah, it, it allows you to socially choose what you want to watch and what you want to listen to. Besides that, the streaming functionality is in devices that are, you know, like the Vizio, Google TV, that only costs 100 bucks. It's $200 cheaper. So I'm really not sure what's going to happen with it. I mean, it's very cool. I can walk up to it because it has NFC and tap it. So that's cool. But besides, like, a, a geek gadget, I don't see a lot. I don't see, besides, like, techies buying it. You know, I, I, yeah, I don't I, do not see any use for it. I I do not know why Google just didn't integrate this into the Google TV, um, because that would make sense. That this product in a Google TV, let's make the Google TV cost one fifty, maybe even two hundred. If it had all this functionality, uh, it might be worth buying it. One fifty, I think, would be good. Yeah, I don't see how this integrates with the rest of their product line. I mean, it, it seems like it so, sort of competes with Google TV, and if you just want to socially play music, I mean, there, there's other apps you can use to, to do that. I mean, why not just use, you know, Spotify or something? It, it seems that and that you have to have an Android device to interact with it. It just, I don't see a lot of these getting sold. But, I mean, it, it's more than just a, a, a you know, a phone-shaped ball. I mean, it actually has an integrated uh, amplifier. So you can plug speakers right into it. You know, so it can replace your home stereo, your your home Blu-ray player. Yeah, but social sharing needs to be portal portable. So okay, I'm gonna plug in my stereo, and then oh wait, I gotta unplug it. Oh, when I come home, I gotta plug it back in. That that could be a nuisance. I I'd like to see where it goes. Um, I didn't buy one. I'm not gonna buy one right now. I'm gonna wait a little bit, John. When you get yours. Let me know. Uh, maybe I'll drive down to your house. You're only like what, two hours away. We'll play around with it. Um, play some dubstep on my system. Yeah, we'll, I'm gonna, I'm we'll replace turn, our turntable channel and uh, just share music that way. <laughs> so let's move on uh, and talk about Jelly Bean for other devices. Um, as we were hinting at earlier and talking about earlier, the Galaxy Nexus GSM, actually the TACJU version from Google, the Google Play Store, that version was handed out at I.O. And within a few hours of the devs turning the phone on, it received Jelly Beans, uh, the over-the-air update. And then because our community is absolutely amazing, you know, they took an Android backups and ported it over to their regular GSM version. And then because our community is even more amazing, people took that version and ported it over to the Toro or the Verizon LTE version. Now, it's not, you know, it's not a compiled version. It's a port. So basically what they do is they take all the files that are supposed to be on the LTE version and drop them over, you know, drop them in the, the ROM remove all the GSM files, edit some files, edit some XML, some small, you know, whatever, uh, the standard porting routine, and you have a as close to possible jelly bean ROM. And I said most of us have been running it for a day or two, generally without any issues. I mean, it took a, a day to get some bugs ironed out, but it's completely stable, and I use it as my daily driver, and I would use it for the next year as my daily driver. It works great. Um, it's, it has been ported to the 1X. It's not fully working yet. There's some features that don't work. 
uh, the SGS3, the Galaxy S3. It had it ported over to that. Uh, but I don't think everything's working yet either. Now, right before the show started, you guys were talking about it, the Nexus S image is being released. Is, is that what I heard? Nexus 7. Oh, the Nexus 7 images. Okay. I thought I heard you say Nexus S. I was going to say that's, that's really quick. So we heard the Nexus S and the ne Galaxy Nexus GSM version as well as the Zoom should be getting it in a couple weeks. Google announced that. So if you have any of those devices and you're not into, you know, bleeding edge, getting it before you're supposed to, you'll get it here in, you know, maybe two weeks or so. As well, that's when AOSP is going to drop, so we'll start seeing custom ROMs. Um, I, be I believe they are going to push to AOSP in like 10 days, not, not more. ASP comes first and the images, so I believe they will come faster than you think. Well, that's good though. They have the they put the Nexus 7 images out there. That means people are already starting. They're gonna already start ripping them apart and making custom ROMs for them. Which, in my opinion, you know, I think that is silly. You know, give people you know play with it for at least a week, figure its internals out, and then start ripping it apart. You know, but that that's my opinion, and we're. I'm sure we all think differently about that. Are we talking about parts? Uh, I'm talking about I'm talking about running a custom ROM. You know, I'll, I'll go ahead and rant about it for a minute. So I, I've read your I've read your your post about this. My post, yeah. So yes. long, long story short is people were making custom kernels already and ROM tweaks already for these ports. Now, and, and these aren't you know fully stable ports because because they're ports. And there's already a couple things wrong with them, so they go ahead and add, throw more stuff into the mix by, you know, tweaking kernels, putting scripts oh, in there. Well, wait know? a second. Uh, let me explain. The, um, the kernel source, it's stable, comes directly from their, their source. It's not hacked. It's not uh, I understand. I understand that the kernel source is, is available. Yes, so we, we, we can... Get it and try to improve the the port's experience. And since we are going to build uh, our next kernels based on that code, there's no problem in starting to to change them. So well, I, I understand that. It's just that I I would prefer that if the two ROMs that are out there came with the stock kernel yes. instead of instead of Fox kernel or you know Franco kernel. You know they came with the stock kernel, and then users could flash these experimental new kernels themselves. I think that is absolutely stupid to throw more bugs into the mix right off the yes. bat. You know, that just it makes the you know it makes the experience bad. And but to be honest with you, I, I guess the kernel that I'm running it's the stock kernel, but I guess you compiled it actually. Yes, I, I got the sources and I compiled it. because uh, the install the the. Uh, script whenever it's ran it says something I, I, I see uh, your name on it so but <laughs> it, droid vicious put it up on his thread and it when I run it it says script thanks to Francisco Franco so uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but any but it, I compared the the build number of the, the kernel so what I'm running is the same thing as the stock kernel on the GSM version right now so it is that but in my opinion, you know, anybody that wants to flash these ROMs on their Galaxy Nexuses, go ahead. They're completely stable, but make sure you download the stock kernel as well and flash that. And then when you want to start testing around bleeding edge stuff, go ahead and move over to these other guys' kernels. I mean, they know what they're doing, but, you know, there's no, there's no reason to throw more kinks in the mix from day one. You know, stay, stay stock. Figure out how it works, know how it works, and then start tweaking it. You know, because then you'll be able to tell the difference. You know, I could, I would hate to see Jelly Beans perform, Jelly Beans performance or concept degraded because you know you're running a custom kernel off the bat. I would be more concer concerned about user user line tweaks than just kernel because the ROMs are not based from source, so exactly. I think that's more problematic than installing a kernel. But I see what you mean. You are 
I agree with you. So hopefully, he said, hopefully somebody out there ports does a clean, a hundred percent clean port. You know, only drops the files and edits the files that need to be there to make the port work, and you know, doesn't do any init.d changes or whatever other people are doing. But after all, after all, port is a port. It's not compiled from source. It's not the same thing. I know. Beggars can't be choosers. I should be happy with what, what, what I'm running right now, but if it could be better, I want to be better. Yes, I agree. So, last but not least, who watched the Project Glass uh, keynote demonstration? <laughs> yep. Who had your mind blown? <laughs> I, yeah. It was freaking awesome. I am getting them. <laughs> yeah, uh, right now they're available at I.O. Uh, for 1500 bucks. Yeah, now, is, that, is that a raffle price, or is that I can purchase it if I have fifteen hundred dollars? You can purchase it. It's not you're purchasing it. There was like a promise between you and Google that when they did when they release you know, it, you get the first. One you get the first ones, and then you pay that. Yeah. I just take mix. That's all I do. <laughs> now, for those of you that didn't watch it, uh, I'm gonna we'll find the video and post it later. You need to go watch that. It's a Google Plus Hangout broadcast on air like this is right now, which is cool. Um, they jump out of a blimp, even cooler, and they film the entire thing. All the jumpers, the skydivers, whatever they're called, all wear glass. So we're, we're seeing what they're seeing as they're falling to the earth. And, it, you know, and then they, you know, uh, scale down the building and ride bikes and they do all these extreme, you know, sports you'd stop to, you know, to get up on stage to give Sergey the glasses and everything. It it was very, very cool. I absolutely loved it. But it, that that was that was all very cool, but why do you want another device catching more moments of you, uploading them to Google servers? They know what where you live, they know where you go, then they, they will be like your eyes, they will see what you see. All to serve you better ads. I'm okay with that. You know, I, you okay? but, but I, mean, I, I mean, that's how they make their money. And they they need to know a, a decent amount of uh, information about the people that they're serving ads to because you know, 90% of their business is ads. So I, it, it makes sense, but it's up to the end consumer on whether or not it is worth it for them. I mean, if you're on other types of services, if you're in, uh, you know, SkyDrive or if you're on Facebook or on Twitter, I mean, your information is getting shared there, too, and they know information about you, and it's whether or not you want to do it or not. So, But, but remember that the end user wants to buy a 15 pair of glasses um, and show his friends, oh, my God, I have a 1,500 um, glasses. Look at me. The end user thinks like this. Most of the end user. Yeah, but the, the, the 1500 is for the developer model only. It's not for the end user that they're coming out in 2014. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 still, it's still a bad idea, in my opinion. I don't want to share my house, my whatever I do with Google. It's another. I don't really. Share. But it, I, I think it's such a new new type of device that we don't really know what it's going to get used for yet. I mean, maybe it'll just be for obnoxious ad serving, but I don't think. I mean, the, the the use cases they've talked about so far are you know people taking pictures and uploading it to share with friends and family, and I don't really have a problem with that as long as it's not always on. You know. Yeah, I I think I mean they're looking to enhance you know. Enhance your life. I, I think that it's cool. I'm gonna buy one. Pending my wife lets me spend that much money. <laughs> I, I, I can handle your wife. I got this. I don't know. If, I, I don't know if I could fork over fifteen hundred dollars for a pair of glasses. I just don't know if I could do it. Well, I, I, that, that's for the developer version. I'm sure the the consumer cost will be lower. Yeah, there's a rumor that it's gonna be half. You know. So. I, there's a whole lot of other stuff that you know happened at Google I/O. Um, 
there's a lot to cover that we didn't, you know, additional information to cover that we didn't talk about. If there's anything that you would like us to touch, touch on, talk about for a few minutes here, go ahead and leave us a comment, and we'll do our best to talk about it. But he said we tried to cover the main things that were most interesting and uh, most popular. Um, and so that's that's really about it. Uh, personally, I. Oh, we forgot to mention a rumor. Go ahead. It is rumored, um, according to... Um, da, da, da. Completely forgot about it. I don't know why I did. Um, so oh, there's, there's, about, there, there's two things. There's a uh, uh, security feature was added to the face unlock. Um, so let's say my friend got a picture of me and wanted to unlock my phone with the face unlock. That's cool. Uh, but now you actually can't because they added a feature that you have to blink. Um, yeah, I actually took a pic took screenshots of that yesterday, and I wanted to write an article on Android Authority about it, but I got busy last night, and I won't be able to do it tonight. But tomorrow night, I, as long as nobody else writes, I'm going to write a write-up on that. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's not a blink, I'll tell you right now. It's close your eyes for one second because I blinked. You know, like I'm, you know, if you're watching, like I'm blinking now, and it didn't do anything. So I'm sitting there, I'm blinking, I'm blinking, I'm blinking. Didn't recognize you. You know, I was like, what? Try it again. Blink, not again. I was like, okay. Let me close my eyes, one one thousand, open, and then it worked. So whenever you try it, don't do a normal blink or even a delayed blink. Make sure you really wait a second and so the screen can see your eyes close. And that's what it does. It wants to see your eyes close. Because then if you open your eyes quick enough, you can see your eyes closed in the you know in that small delay, and then you can see it it, it authorizes you. So uh, it's a neat feature though. Uh, you, you can't hold a picture up anymore and, and unlock it. Uh, the rumor I was talking about is the uh, Nexus 7 might have a big brother Nexus. Oh, yeah. Nexus yeah, Digi Times uh, reported that earlier that they had some insider information that a 10-incher is coming. So if you're not used to holding a 7-incher in your hands... Uh, I, got, I got a question. What do you guys... Coming. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you guys think that they will go directly at Apple to compete with Apple and offer a premium premium uh, around the same prices too? Or do you think it'll be a, you know, we're going to lose money when we sell these, but it'll be with content that we make it up? Hopefully both. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully both. Go after mm -hmm. the iPad and... I don't know if that can happen. you got to no. make some type of... You know what? In yeah, I mean, they're, they're selling the Nexus 7 basically at cost, so that they're you know entirely trying to make money off content there. Just the same thing that Amazon did, but they were losing money, right? It was something like that. Um, well, um, it's a rumor. They didn't say how. Yeah. You know, when uh, Brady was uh, interviewed, he didn't actually say you know how much you know that it cost them, you know what they were making or selling on it, but. You know, since it's a content device and it's sold so cheaply, they're probably not making a whole lot on it, and they're going to make it up with content similar to what you know Amazon is doing. Four hundred dollars? What do you guys think price point? If the, if this rumor is true, what do you think the price point will be? You got to depend on the specs. You can't go on anything without the specs. Exactly. So, do you think it's going to be a full blown tablet that competes with the iPad directly, or do you think it's going to be a uh, a, a cheaper one with uh, NVIDIA's, you know, Kai. The, uh, low, the low end storage model of it, I bet it'll be 300, uh, 300 bucks. The high end storage, maybe, you know, the, you know, if they have a 32 gig version or something, I don't know. We'll have uh, a 16 gig or something like that, or a 32 and a 64, I don't know. But the low end version will probably be about 300, 350. Okay. I guess. Okay. Let me check, see if we have any questions here. It said uh, IO. A lot of information to talk about. So, um, one thing about I/O that I do want to mention because it's hot. It's a hot topic right now. Uh, earlier today, Apple and Google, or Apple and Samsung, I guess, uh, had a, a legal ruling that may result in the Galaxy Nexus getting banned in the U.S. Not sure on that. It all depends what Apple tries to do, but the judge did rule that some of their patents 
such as slide to unlock, you know, the thing that people have been doing for thousands of years with the door, uh, is patented uh, by, by Apple, and Android uses that similar. I believe it's a, a four patents. One's yes. Well, one has to do with search, multi-source search. Exactly. Yeah, very it, was, it was federated search, um, the slide to unlock, their data detector patent, the same one they used against HTC, and the fourth one was um, on-screen keyboards with the predictive text input. Yeah, so ba basic functions, predictive text, multi-search functions. So it, it would even affect Jelly Bean, you know, I, I mean... Cause these are standard functions in, in phones. It, 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 it could potentially affect quite a few smartphones, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how Apple plays with this, because if they go directly at Google, then uh, you know who's going back at Apple, and uh, that might get interesting. It yep. will all hurt consumers, though, because they'll be wasting money doing nothing. Well, and, and this is also subject to Apple posting, I think, a $96 million bond. Um, Basically, Apple has to put up some money in case this, you know, uh, they lose, that they can reimburse Samsung for uh, lost profits. Yep. Okay, so if you have any other questions, uh, go ahead and hit us up, and we'll try to answer them next week, where we'll hopefully have some more jelly bean information to throw at you. I want to thank our friend John for do for joining us. John is, a, like I said, he's a good friend of ours, and a he knows a lot about cell phones. He sells them for a living. So if you ever have any questions about what phones to get, he's, he's your man. Go ahead and hit him up. If you're into Flash and Custom Kernels, Francisco Franco, just don't butcher his name like I did. Uh, yeah, you got to say it in a Portuguese accent or he'll, he'll hate on you. Francisco <laughs> Franco. Like yeah, there Francisco yeah. Frank. And uh, therefore, a very intelligent uh, guy as well. We're happy to have him back on the show. Thanks again for watching, and everybody have a good night. Good night.